Four. Very good. It is four, okay? So what it's asking for when you have the square root is what number times itself gives you that number underneath. Four times four gives me 16, so the answer is four. What about the square root of 64? Allison? Eight. Very good. The square root of 225. 15. Very good, Miguel. All right. Did anyone get the square root of 2025? Hey yo, very nice. Number five. How'd you get that? You used a calculator or no? Wow. 240 is correct. Miguel, you're the first person all day. Number six. Yeah. 36, square root of 36 is six. What about number seven, the square root of 400? 20. Very good. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 3,600? 60. 60. Okay? I want you to notice something about number 7 and number 9, okay? Notice how many zeros there are. Do you see how we're taking the square root of a number with two zeros? Your answer should have one of those zeros, right? Because 20 times 20, right? The 2's multiply, you get 4, and then you have two zeros afterwards, Okay? Same thing with number nine, right? We look at number six. The square root of 36 was six. The square root of 3,600 is going to be 6D, okay? They added a zero. All right, any questions on one through nine from the warm-up? Okay, what number technically is supposed to go in front of that radical for all of these examples? Not a one. It's a 2, okay? Because that's called the square root. Does anyone remember what that number is called? Yes, very good. It's called your index. Good, Gabby. Okay? It's called your index. So what we're doing today, right, is we are going to be given square root, um, like, radicals where we don't know the square root of the number underneath. And we're going to have to simplify that value until its most basic, simplest form, but we will still have a radical at the end. So they're not going to be perfect squares necessarily, okay? All right, so this entire chapter involves the radicals, okay? So we're going to be dealing with radicals a lot. And we're going to be using properties of radicals, and the first thing we're going to learn about is a radical expression. That's just like these. Any expression that contains a radical, right, which is this symbol, is a radical expression. And an expression involving a radical with an index n, so if we put an n here, we can change that number of n, right, to be a different index. It could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 2, okay? It's in simplest form when there are three conditions met. And these three are the, those three conditions. So label them 1, 2, and 3, please. Natalia? Yes, you may. So the first condition says no radicands can have perfect nth powers as factors other than one, okay? What that means is if we have the square root of four, we should never leave the square root of four just sitting there. What can we always change the square root of four into? The number two without a radical, okay? So we're not going to leave radicals in our expression at the end because then it wouldn't be completely simplified, okay? The second thing says is no radicands can contain fractions. That means you cannot have a radical with the number one-fourth underneath. This is a big no-no, okay? If you leave your answer like this, you will lose a lot of points, okay? You cannot have a fraction underneath the radical. Write that one down for number two. And number three, it says no radicals can appear in the denominator of the fraction. So you're not going to be able to leave your answer as one over the square root of two. This will not be able to happen, okay? You'll have to be able to simplify it, all right? And we're going to start one at a time, and I'm going to show you how to simplify these in each case, okay? <clears throat> the first property that we're going to use is something called the product property of square roots, what does the word product mean, guys? Bruce, what'd you say? Multiply. Very good. So in order to use this property, guess what symbol needs to be there? The multiplication symbol, okay? And what that 
property says is it says if you have two numbers that are being multiplied underneath your radical, right? For example, nine and five, you can do what with their square roots? How did they go from here to the second one? From here to here, what did they do, Josh? Excellent, they split it up. But you're only allowed to do that when this is what symbol? Multiplication. Multiplication. If this was a plus sign, could we apply this? No. If this was a minus sign, could we apply this? No. no. Has to be either a multiplication, and we're gonna see it in a little bit later, it can also be a division symbol, okay? Josh, was that your question? Okay. Now, the, why is this useful? Well, nine times five we knew is 45. We don't know the square root of 45, but when we break it down, do we know the square root of nine? Yes. yes, so we can simplify that to three. Do we know the square root of five though? No. no, so we get stuck with this one as part of our answer, okay? But this would be completely simplified. Because you could break down the nine and take the square root of it, you should always pull out anything that is a perfect square, okay? All right, so in order to simplify all of our expressions, the numbers that are perfect squares become super critical. So let's list some of them out on the left-hand side of our page. What are the perfect squares? Let's start with 2. What's 2 squared? What's 2 to the second power? 4. What's 3 to the second power? 9. What's uh, 4 to the second power? 16. 5 to the second power? 25. And 6 to the second power? 36. Do you guys agree this list goes on and on? All right, so let's just put some dots. But so what we're looking for, guys, is we're going to look, okay, if any of these are factors of the base of our square root, we want to be able to factor those out so we can pull them outside the radical, okay? So let's start with 108. Which of these factors do you think is going to be a factor? Which of these perfect squares is going to be a factor of 108? Alicia? Nine. Let's do it. So we're going to do 109, or 108, excuse me, and we're going to divide it by nine. Alicia's seeing if nine is a factor of 108. How many times does nine go into one? None. How many times does nine go into ten? One. So we subtract what from ten? Nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. And we get one. Very good. What do we do next? Bring down the eight, and we get two. So we subtract 18. Do we have a remainder? No. no. So 9 and 12 give me 108. Do you guys agree? So watch this. I'm going to rewrite this 108 as what two numbers multiplied together? 9 and 12. So it's going to be the square root of 9 times 12. Who is with me so far? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down so far with what I've just done. Okay. Now, based on the property that we just learned, guys, what can I do with these two values? You can split them up. Very good. So we're going to say, okay, this is the square root of 9 and the square root of 12. Do we know the square root of 9 or the square root of 12? What? 9. What is the square root of 9? 3. So we're going to put a 3 here without a radical now because we just found the square root of it, right? and we have the square root of 12. Now, you're not done until you look to see if we can do that again. Does the square root of 12 have a factor that's on the list that we put on the left? Which one? It's divisible by four. So let's break down the 12. So it's gonna be three times the square root of, what did we say, it was four times three, because four times three gives me back to 12. Talk to me. How are we doing so far? Are we okay? We split it up again. Who said that? Nathan. Very good. So we split it up again. We're going to get 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. What would you say? 2 times 2 gives me 4. Very good. So this is 3 times 2 times the square root of 3. Which numbers do you think I multiply? The 3 and the 2. Why do I multiply those two? Because there's a multiplication symbol. Well, why can't I multiply this 2 and this 3? One's outside the square root and one is inside the square root. Do you guys see that? So we multiply this 3 and this 2 and we get 6 times the square root of 3. Now, 
I'm going to tell you guys we stop here. Why do you think we stopped here? You can't split it up. Three, its only factors are what? One and three, right? So, and do we know the square root of three? No, so we're stuck, right? You want to get stuck. You want to get to the point where you can't break this guy down any further. Now, do not try to break down the six because the six is already outside the square root, right? So don't keep taking the square root of it. If it's outside the square root, it's not part of your, un, your, your radical anymore, okay? Talk to me. What questions do we have on this first example? Alex. This part? Okay. So all we're doing at this point, right, was we noticed, okay, the square root of 12. We always want to try to break that down further. And we notice that 4 is also a perfect square. And 4 goes into 12 three times. So we broke it down into 4 and 3. We split it up again. And we got 2. You just put 2, yeah. Because 2 times 2 gives you 4, which is the square root of 4. Kind of? We're going to do more examples. Gabby? Um, I don't know. Pretty large. Yeah, Sancia? Why what? Why I picked nine? Okay. Um, Alicia picked nine because she was looking at this list, right? And she just was like, I don't know, maybe let's try nine, right? You could have picked four. You could have picked 16. You could have picked 25. But you had to check to see if they divided into 108, if they were a factor, okay? Not all of them will work, okay? Four, I will tell you, will work. Um, and actually, 36 would work as well, okay? Yes. Yes, you may. All right, good questions. What other questions do we have on example A? Okay, let's check out example B. Nope, we're going to go to C first. We'll go back to B. Let's do C first. The square root of 24. So people are shaking their heads. We can't break it down any further. All right, let's look back at our list. Is 4 a factor of 24? Yeah. All right, let's start there. So what can we break down 24 into? That involves 4. 6 and 4, excellent. So let's write, rewrite it. It's going to be the square root of 4 times 6. You guys with me? What can I do at this point? You split it. Very good. So it's going to be the square root of 4 and the square root of 6. Which one of those do I know? The square root of 4. That becomes a 2. Now remember, can we still continue to break down 6? Sure. 6 is what two numbers multiplied together? 2 and 3. But ask yourself, are 2 or 3 perfect squares? No. No. So can we actually break down the 6 anymore? No. Okay, you can break it down to the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, but if it's not a perfect square, you don't have to keep going. So we're stuck at the square root of 6. And we're done. Questions? Talk to me. You have a question? What's your question, Natalia? You can say it. Oh, okay. Then why'd you shake your head yes? Okay. All right. Let's move on to D. Yes. So you're saying that it's like multiplied by numbers, not two even numbers, and then simplify? No, it has nothing to do with odd or even. Alec, what we're looking for is we're seeing, okay. Do any of these numbers, can I factor them out of the number underneath the radical? And if I can, then I want to factor that number out. Okay? Let's take a look at D, guys. How is D slightly different than the other two? There's a negative in front. Should we freak out? No. Okay? Well, guys, we will not freak out, okay? So we're just going to, the negative is just going to come along for the ride. So we're going to put negative out in front. Let's try to break down 80 into two factors where one of them is a perfect square. Josh? Four. Four, very good. 
It's going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 20. Very good. Okay. Do we know what the square root of 4 is? Very good. It's 2. So it's going to be negative, and then we're going to have a 2 now. And then the square root of 20 still. Ah, so now 20, we're like, okay, can we break that one down further? Someone said 10. That would be 10 and 2, right? But that's not helpful because our, is 10 a perfect square? Is 2 a perfect square? No, so let's only think about the perfect squares. 5 and 4, very good. So we're going to do negative 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, yes? All right, but what was the purpose of that? Because which one do we know? The 4. The square root of 4 is what? So we have negative 2 times 2 times the square root of 5. Yes? All right, what do I do from here? Negative 2 times 2, which is? So I have negative 4 times the square root of 5. Am I stuck? Why? You can't break down the 5, so this is my answer. I'm done. Oh. A little bit? Yeah, Sancia? Ooh, very good question. Guys, I need you to pay attention to Sancia's question. Can you ask it a little bit louder? You absolutely know that the square root of 4 is 2. But I have a question, Sancia. Is there a radical above the 4? No. So when there's no radical above the number, it's already been pulled out. You don't want to touch it. Okay? Yes? Yep. Why would make it two? Why does it go away? Well, what is the square root of four, right? What number times itself gives you four? And the answer is two, right? So do you remember in the warm-up, right, Charlie? How we were writing those values were equal? Mm -hmm. I know that these two are equivalent. The square root of four is two, and two is the square root of four. So I can replace them either way. Okay? Well, kind of? Well, for 20, you put square root of four. Yeah, because 4 times 5 gives me 20, right? Yeah, but how can we have the radical value? Because the 20 was underneath the radical. So was the 4. Yep, the 4 was underneath the radical, but we can we know the square root of 4, so we pull it out. Do you know the square root of 20 here, Charlie? No, so you have to break it down so you can simplify it. Okay? Yes. What other questions, guys? Josh? You sure? Okay. Can we now look at B? Gabby? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, let's break this one down. What operation is going on underneath the radical? Multiplication. multiplication okay. What can I do when multiplication is down there? No. Split it. Split it. You can split this up into the square root of what? Nine and the square root of x to the third. Do we know the square root of nine? Yes, yes that is three. So it's going to be a three, no radical. And the second half, which is the square root of x cubed, let's try to break that down further. x times x times x. You guys agree? But are any of these perfect squares? No. no. So let's merge two of them together. Let's make one of them x squared. Why would that help me? What's the square root of x squared? X. So check this out. We're going to get 3. Are we able to find the square root of just x? No, so that one stays the same, the square root of x, but we know that the square root of x squared is just x. So now, guys, when you're writing your final answer, all the terms that are outside the radical come first. All the terms underneath your radical come at the end. So how do you think I have to write my final answer here, Josh? 3x and then x, and then the square root of x. Very good. All right, talk to me. What questions? What questions do we have?
Sounds good. Sounds good. Why did I put the X next to the thing? I need a little bit more description. No, sorry, the I said three. Next to the three. Okay, because we write our answers, right, with all the terms that are not under a radical first and all the terms that have a radical as the last, okay? If you left it like this, it's not a big deal, okay? But just get more, more into the habit of writing it like this. Yeah, Sienna. Yes, you may. All right, let's number or letter E. What do I do in letter E? Find two factors. Two factors? What do you mean? And you have to break down the X. Okay. So help, start, start me off, Natalia. Go ahead. No? What are you saying? Oh, you were counting them. Okay, okay, okay. Does 49 have a square root? Seven. Sure does. It's seven. But first, before that, guys, aren't these being multiplied? Okay, so can we break it up into the square root of 49 and the square root of x to the third? You got to do that first. Yes. And then the square root of 49 is seven. No, we're not supposed to, right? Because, Josh, once we find the square root of 49... It becomes seven. No square root anymore. Okay? So the square root of 49 is seven. The square root of x cubed, we're going to break that down into what? X squared and? X. x. Very good. Because the two plus the one gets me back to three. You guys agree? Yes. All right. Do we know the square root of x squared? It's x. Do we know the square root of x? We leave it because we're stuck. And that's our answer. 7x times the square root of x. Mm -hmm. All right. F. Yeah. You're lost on this one. What's that? The whole thing. Okay. Can you come to office hours today? Perfect. All right. Letter F. We've got the square root of 75 n to the fifth. What do I do first? Break it down. Split it up. So it's going to be the square root of 75 and the square root of n to the fifth. What do I do after that? What's that? n to the second. Okay. I'm going to tell you there's a greater perfect square that we should factor out of n to the fifth. n to the fourth. Very good. Let's break this down into the square root of n to the fourth and the square root of n. 15 times 5, 15 times five gives me 75. Are 5 or 15 perfect squares? Mm -mm. Let's think of a different number. You're close, though. Remember, let's list out our perfect squares. They were 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Guys, are any of those going to be able to go into 75? 25, very good. This 75 is going to break down into the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Very good. 3 quarters give us 75 cents. All right. Yes. I'm thinking like how did we get that part wrong? Like how? I don't know. Like, are you sure? Yeah. Ask which part are you talking about? The like first like, part here or like, this second part? Just like picking the number. Oh, picking the number. Like so picking the number, you have to pick from this list, okay? Because if it's not part of that list, then you don't. You're not going to be able to simplify it, right? So four is an even number, it's not gonna be able to go into 75. Nine, we could definitely try, okay? But when I do 75 divided by nine, um, I think it goes in, it's gonna be 72, because it would be si or eight, right? Eight times nine is 72, and I get three remaining, so it doesn't go in evenly, right? So you're like, okay, it's not gonna be nine. Can't be 16, because that's also an even number. Mm -hmm. So then you would be like, oh, 25 maybe, right? Oh, so how's it, it can't, there can't be a remainder. Correct. There cannot be a remainder. It has to go in evenly. Alec? Yes, you may. 
So we're going to do the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. That will give me the square root of 25 we already know is 5 times the square root of 3. What is the square root of n to the fourth? n to the second power. And then the square root of n. So we're going to put, remember, all the terms that are outside your radical first, and then all the terms that are under your radical second. How do you think I rewrite this? 5n squared. What's that? You need to repeat that one more time. You got it? And then what goes underneath my radical? 3 and n. And they're multiplied. Yeah, Charlie? Where did I get into the fourth? Right? So, Charlie, this was a square root, right? So I want to pick a number, or I want to split it up so it has a perfect square. n to the fourth, right? Do you guys agree that n squared times n squared would give me n to the fourth? So then the square root of n to the fourth is n squared. Because we're looking for two values that when you multiply them by themselves, by each other, they give you that value underneath. So the square root of n to the fourth is n squared. You guys, what would be the square root of n to the eighth? n to the fourth, right? What would be the square root of n to the 16th? N, no, not to the 4th. The 8th. Because, you guys, n to the 8th times n to the 8th, do you agree we add those exponents? And we get n to the 16th? What would be the square root of n to the 6th? n to the 3rd. Okay? What would be the square root of n to the 18th? And to the ninth. Okay. Does that make a little bit more sense now? Coach. Hey. Hey, Coach. Can I just pop this door open and run some? Yeah, picture? go for it. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be looking at a cahoots, but they're a mile through. Okay. Is that going to bother you? I, I can stand there. It's fine. Let's do the square root of 72. I want you to simplify it. All right, let's talk about it. So, what can we factor out that's a perfect square from 72? Natalia, 16 and 4. 16 times 4. 4 times 6 gives me 24. Bring up the 2. 4 times 1 gives me 4, plus 2 gives me 6. That's 64. That will not work, Natalia. What? 9 times 8 will work. 9 times 8, the square root of 9 times the square root of 8. Why is that helpful? Why, should, why am I excited that I picked 9 or 8? Which one's more important? The 9. Why is the 9 important? No, not that it can be factored. It has a perfect square, right? What's the square root of 9? 3. So we have 3 times the square root of 8. Guys, can we keep going? You sure can. What's a perfect square that goes into 8? 4 and 2. So we have the square root of 4 and the square root of 2. Which one of those is important? The 4. What's the square root of 4? So we have 3 times 2 times the square root of 2, which is 6 times the square root of 2. Are we stuck? Why are we stuck? Why are we stuck? You can't break down the square root of 2. So we're done. You got it? Can I show you the easy way to get it? So the easy way to get it, right, is to pick a larger number as large as possible. 
There's a larger factor of 72. That's a perfect square. 36 times what? Two. What's the square root of 36? Did we get the same answer? A lot less steps on the right. Do you guys agree? Try to factor out the largest perfect square as possible, okay, at, that you can at the start, okay? Can we do another one? So the square root of 50, right, we can absolutely break that down into the square root of 25 and the square root of 2. Why is that helpful, Miguel? 5 and the square root of 2. Okay, and that is our answer. That's it. Well, we're stuck because do you know the square root of 2, Sienna? Does 2 have factors that are perfect squares? Then we can't move on. Okay? All right, guys. We, the next set of examples is when we have division. Okay? So it's going to be the quotient property of square roots. Okay? So we're going to be dividing. You're going to see fractions. The, we apply the exact same process. You just split up the radical, okay? So if we have the square root of 3 over 4, it turns into the square root of 3 over the square root of 4, okay? It's pretty much the exact same thing as multiplying, okay? So let's take a look at letter A. We've got the square root of 15 over 64. We're going to start these problems by splitting it up from the beginning. We're going to do the square root of 15 over the square root of 64. Do you know the square root of 15? No. Are we able to factor it to a perfect square? What would you try? Five and three, right? But are either of those perfect squares? No, so are we stuck in the numerator? Sure, so we're just gonna leave it as the square root of 15. Do you know the square root of 64? What is it? It's eight, very good. And that's my answer. Yeah, Sienna? No. That's the answer. Yep. B. Okay, so what do I do first? What did I say to do first? Split it up. So it's going to be the square root of 81 over the square root of x squared. Ah, 9 over x. That's my answer. That's it. Remember, guys, all we're doing is simplifying, okay? All we're doing is simplifying. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Let's look, take a look at letter C. We have, we have the square root of 28 or 23 over 9. What do I do? Split it up. So it's square root of 23 over the square root of 9. Do you know the square root of 23? So, but wait, before you leave it, you should look for what? Factors that are perfect squares, right? Does 23 have any factors? No. Other than one in itself, it has no factors. So we're going to leave it. It's going to be the square root of 23. What about the square root of 9? 3. So we're done. What? There's a negative? Oh, in letter D. Okay. What do I do here? What? What? Yeah, split it. So it's going to be, don't forget the negative, square root of 17 over the square root of 100. What can we do with the square root of 17? Nada, you can't do anything. So negative square root of 17 over 10. Because the square root of 100 is 10. Talk to me. Better? Okay, let's move on. E. Six. Sorry. Six over Z. Six over Z. All right, let's take our time here. Let's take our time here with that. What do I do first? Let's write out all of our steps. Split it into what? So two radicals, one in the numerator and one in the denominator. Then you split the numerator. Very good. It's going to be the square root of 4 and the square root of x squared over, what's the square root of 64? 8. Do we know the square root of 4? 
Do we know the square root of x squared? Yes. This is wrong still. Someone tell me why this is wrong. Why is this wrong? What about one fourth? You have to simplify. Do two and eight have a common factor? What is their common factor? Two. Divide them both by two, you get one over. So my answer is x over four. What questions do we have so far? All right. What? One over four x would also work. Mm -hmm. Like one fourth x, that would work as well. All right. Next, we are going to um, also talk about cube roots, okay? So when we're talking about cube roots and we want to simplify them, right, we're not going to talk about the perfect squares anymore. We're going to talk about the perfect cubes. So we're going to talk about 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, 5 cubed, and so on. So we're looking for these perfect cubes to be factors of our radical, whatever's underneath the radical. What is 2 cubed, guys? 2 times 2 times 2. It's 8. Very good. What's 3 cubed? 27, excellent. What's four cubed? 64. And five cubed, does anyone remember? 125, excellent. So this list continues to go on, but we're looking for one of these. If we can factor it out of whatever's underneath the radical, then we can simplify. So let's look at letter A. What do you think would go into 128? Sansia? Uh, there's not enough time. Four cubed. Four cubed, 64. Very good, Natalia. We can break this 128 into the cube root of 64 times the cubed root of what? Two, because 64 times two will give me 128. What do you do with the negative? Now, I've intentionally made a mistake. I forgot something. What did I forget? The negative. The negative. Does it matter which of these factors is negative? No. So pick one and make it negative. I'm going to make the two negative. All right. Now, why did Natalia pick 64? Do we know the cube root of 64? Yeah. What is it? Four. four. Oh, oh. Cubed root, not square root anymore, cubed root. And do we know the cubed root of negative two? Mm -hmm. No. So we just leave it as the cubed root of negative two. We're done. Now, you will see that answer. Sometimes they'll pull the negative outside. It could be negative four cube root of two, okay? Either of those answers, they're both the same. You will see both. Huh? No, not yet. Number or letter B. We've got the cube root of 125. X. First thing you gotta do is split it up. So let's split it up into the cube root of 125 and the cube root of x to the seventh, oops, not fourth. Do we know the cubed root of 125? 25. Not 25. Mm -hmm. It's five, why is it five? What's five times five? 25. What's 25 times five? 25. So do you guys agree five cubed is 125? So the cubed root of 125 is five. Now. We have to break up the second one. We want to break it up so that x's exponent is divisible by whatever the index is. So we're going to have the cubed root of something and the cubed root of something else. What do you think goes underneath this first one? x to what power? The sixth. Very good, Melanie. And then the second one is just going to be x. Because we use six of our x's in the first one. We have one left over to make seven. This is going to be 5. This is going to be x to what power outside the radical? Third. To the second power. And then the cubed root of x on the inside. Turn these in. Examples with cube roots and then we'll move on, okay? So let's look at example C. We've got the cube root of y and the cube over 216. Now, before we start today, guys, let's refresh. 
What's the difference between a cube root and a square root? Cube root yep. is like um, you have to find like three like and like multiply three times and cube has to be multiplied three times. Excellent, Natalia. When we're talking about a cube root, it's going to be multiplied by itself three times. When it's a square root, it's only going to mul be multiplied by itself twice. So let's check it out. How would we deal with a fraction underneath a radical? What do we do here? Natalia? Very good. So we split it up into the square root or the cubed root of y over the cubed root of 216. All right. Guys, what's the cubed root of y? You can't. Who said you can't? Very good, Nathan. Why can't we take the cubed root of y? It's just y, right? What's y's exponent here? One. one. Guys, if your exponent is one or some number less than the index, it's going to stay the same. So this is just going to remain the cubed root of y. Cool? The denominator, though, does anyone know what the cubed root of 216 is? Natalia? Um, six. Excellent. It is six. So now remember, guys, are you allowed to have a radical in the denominator? No. no. Do we have a radical in the denominator? No, so we're Gucci, okay? Any questions on this example? We're okay? All right, let's do one more. Let's do D. Check out D. What would I do in example D? Natalia. Okay, I hear you saying square root. Oh, no, um, triple root? Cube root, very good. <laughs> so you can say radical with an index of three or a cube root, okay? All right, what do I do from here? Natalia was correct. This is how I start the problem. What do I do after that? Gabby? You separate them, very good. Separate them for me, please. Mm-hmm. Over. Well, the cube root. Mm-hmm. Very good. So we separated it. Guys, when are you able to separate a radical? There's two operations. Natalia? Division and multiplication. Do you guys agree that at the start, this fraction bar meant division? Perfect. And then here, what's going on between the 8 and the x to the 4th? Multiplication, so we're able to split it up. Do you guys see that? You, can you do it with addition and subtraction? No. Can you do it with addition and subtraction? No. No, you cannot, okay? So from here, let's take it one step at a time. Do we know the cube root of 8? No? We sure do. What is it? 2, very good. Because 2 times 2 gives me what? 4. What's 4 times 2? Eight. Hey, yo. Okay. What's the cube root of x to the fourth? This one, we're going to have to split it up. Who thinks they know what we should split it up into? Yes, x to the third and x to the first. Because what is three plus one here? Four. So as long as your exponent remains four, right, you can split it up however you want. What was the, why was this important? Why did I need to do this? Why should I split it up into x cubed and x? How is this going to help me? Gabby? Yeah, you don't know the cube root of x to the fourth. But which one of these do I know the cube root of? x to the third. What's the cube root of x to the third? This is just going to turn into x, okay? So now let's take care of our denominator. Let's finish it off. We have two... What else? X. x and the cube root of x. Anything else to do in the numerator? No, it's completely simplified. Over, let's check out the denominator. 
What's the cubed root of 27? 3. And what's the cubed root of y to the third? Y. y. So we just have 3y in the denominator. That's our answer. I lost you guys. That's a lot of steps. Okay. Um, this one was challenging, okay, because there is a lot of steps, all right? How do we get better at stuff that has a lot of steps? You got to practice it. What's that? To the seventh. Oops. Down to something called rationalizing the denominator, okay? Rationalizing the denominator is required when that denominator is not a perfect square. And I want us to first look at the example in letter C. There were three things at the beginning of this lesson that I said you cannot have. This is one of them. What's wrong with letter C? There's a radical in the denominator. Guys, highlight it. We are not done until that radical is out of the denominator. So what do you think our options are to get that radical out of the denominator? Natalia, flip it. Are you allowed to just flip something? So I have a question for you, Natalia. Is 3 over 1 the same as 1 over 3? No. Do you have to put it in the negative? What do you mean by that? Oh, you mean the exponent? Yeah, we could write it as square root of 5 to the negative first power. But remember, we still can't have negative exponents in our answer. So you flip it again, but then it'd be back on the bottom. So I like where your head's at, okay? Those are good ideas. Gage? Maybe find out what it adds up to. What do you mean by that? Three plus two? Oh, so like factoring it out. So we could say that this is actually equal to one over the square root of three plus two or four plus one. But how would that help me? Multiply it. What are the factors of five? One and five. Are either of those perfect squares? No. So do you guys agree we're kind of stuck? We're kind of stuck? Okay. Let me show you how we're supposed to get this radical out of there. I'm going to multiply by whatever the denominator is. What is the denominator right now? Not five. It's the square root of five. But am I allowed to multiply just by the square root of 5 to the denominator? What do I also have to do in the same step? <laughs> by 1. Why is the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, why is that equal to 1? It's the same in the top and the bottom. Why am I able to multiply anything by 1? Because it would become itself. What's 3 times 1, guys? Three. What's 4 times 1? Four. What's 5 times 1? Five. Do you see a pattern here? Yep. So multiplying by 1, does it change the value of what you're talking about? No. So we want this to stay the same, but we just want it to look different, correct? We don't want that square root in the denominator. So now let's take this step by step. What is 1 times the square root of 5? Square root of 5. What is the square root of 5 times the square root of 5? Square root of 25, right? Do we know the square root of 25? What is it? 5. Is there a radical in the denominator any longer? Hey, oh. This is our answer. What was your question? I don't know what you were asking me there. I did not just flip this, Natalia. Okay? Yeah, Bruce. You don't get it? Okay. So, Bruce, do you agree that we needed to move this square root of 5 somewhere else? It cannot be in the denominator. You get rid of that denominator having a square root by multiplying by that square root again. So we multiplied by the square root of 5 again. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which we know is five without a radical. Okay, Gabby? Why would you make the Oh, what do you mean?
Yeah, why did you make the numerator? Because this has to be one. I can't multiply by a number that's not one. Otherwise, that would change the value of my expression, right? So one over the square root of five is gonna be a number like one over, I don't know, think about like one over six. If I multiply 12 by one over six, am I keeping 12 the same? No, I'm changing its value, right? You wanna keep this square root of five over square root of five equal to one, so you don't actually change the value of what you're dealing with, okay? Good questions. What other questions, guys? Let's do another one. Scroll over to letter D. The square root of 10 over the square root of three. Gabby? I have a question. Oh, on the last one? Yeah, what if you do that, but it doesn't give you a perfect square? It will always give you a perfect square, okay? So this, the reason this works is because you're multiplying by the same thing, and that will always be a perfect so square. Okay, in this one, what should I do to rationalize the denominator? What should I do? Hunter? By the square root of three to both the numerator and the denominator. Check it out. What am I going to get in the numerator? Not just 30, the square root of 30. And in the denominator? The square root of nine. What is the square root of nine? Three. Hold on, before we're done, guys, always look. Can you simplify the square root of 30? You can break it up into 10 and three, but are 10 and three perfect squares? No. What about five and six? Perfect squares? No. Are four, nine, 16, or 25 factors of 30? No, none of them are. Okay, so we're stuck, we're done, this is our answer. Has the radical been eliminated from the denominator? Yes. Yay, so we're happy. Talk to me, what questions do we have on this example? Are we okay? All right, can we go back up to A? Because A involves a variable. We do the exact same thing. Okay, peeps, what do I do here? I agree we multiply. Square root of 3n. Square root of 3n. Okay, now, what is the square root of 5 times the square root of 3n? Square root of 15n over square root of 9n? Squared. What's three? What's three times three? What's three times three? What's n times n? N squared. Okay. Now we're taking the square root. Do we know the square root of fifteen? No. No. Can we break it down? No. Do we know the square root of n? No. So what happens in the numerator? It stays the same. What about the denominator? Do we know the square root of nine? What is it? Do we know the square root of n squared? It's n, so we get three n. Yeah, but it shouldn't have squared. It shouldn't have squared, Kevin. Hey, now I want you guys to do a little investigating. Look at all three of the examples we did and think, see if you notice a pattern. You're welcome, John. See if you notice a pattern and what happened to the denominator? Think about if you notice a pattern in what happened to the denominator between what you started with and what you ended up with. Go. So we are going to skip letter B. Do not do letter B, okay? Let's move on to letter E. Let's talk about it. What do I do in letter E? No, what are you keep changing flip? <laughs> Natalia, I feel like you're just here to watch the world. What do I do in letter E? I multiply by, by but by what? No. 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 What do I multiply by? Not two. 
The square root of 2x and the square root of 2x. Okay? So I multiply by the square root of 2x over the square root of 2x. What do I get in the numerator? The square root of 14x over square root of 4x squared. We have committed an illegal algebra move. What do you think was the wrong move? Putting square because you can't have square. No. The double radical, double radical. And the denominator? No, the denominator is fine. It's funny. I cannot multiply this 7 by this 2. Why not? What? No, not because that is a variable. Alicia? They're not like terms. Um, that's along the right lines. What did you say, Charlie? One is underneath the radical and one is not. You do not multiply numbers that are not inside the radical with numbers that are inside the radical. So is we leave them separated. So we're going to have, oh, whoops, I erased the wrong thing. This is going to be 2x, the square root of 2x. This is not going to be 14x though. We're just going to leave it as 7 outside the radical times the square root of 2x underneath the radical. We cannot multiply the 7 by the 2 because the 2 is underneath the radical. The 7 is not. Okay, So we leave it as 7 times the square root of 2x. Now the denominator, we should be able to simplify. What is the square root of 4x squared? It's 2x, very good. And the numerator cannot be simplified because 2 is not a perfect square and x is not a perfect square either. So it stays as 7 square root of 2x. This is our answer. Let's do another problem. Let's do letter F. What, what would you do in letter F? Separate. Separate. separate it. Very good. So we're going to separate it. We're going to have the square root of 2y squared in the numerator over the square root of 3 in the denominator. How do I know this is the square root, guys, by the way? And not the cube root? There's no number, right? What happens when there's no number? always a square root, okay? There's always a two. Yes, there can be a four. It's called a, a fourth root, okay? It would have a four there. Then why does three not have anything? Threes have threes. The cube root has a three. When it doesn't have anything, what is it, guys? A square root, which is the second root, okay? So what do I do at this point? What's wrong with this piece? I can split the 2 and the y squared. Is that what you guys mean? Or what? What were you guys saying? Multiply by what? Square root of 3. Multiply by the square root of 3 and the square root of 3. Guys, what's the square root of 2y squared times the square root of 3? Can I multiply these two together? Yes. Why? Why am I able to multiply them together? They're both underneath radical. Very good. What do I get? Six y squared. The square root of 6y squared. Very good. Over? 12. No. Nine. The square root of 9. Because 3 times 3 is 9, guys. Okay? Do you know the square root of 6? Do we know the square root of 6? No. Do you know the square root of y squared? What is the square root of y squared? So the y moves outside the radical. What's left over inside the radical? The 6. Very good. No y's are left inside the radical because the square root of y squared was y. That's why it got pulled out. And the square root of 9? 3. This is our answer. Okay, we're going to do one more. 
but we're not gonna do g because that's a cube root. Let's do one where it's two over the square root of seven. <clears throat> I need a volunteer to try it. Natalia, you wanna try it? Yeah. Go ahead, Natalia. Yeah, in front of everyone, yeah. Oh, um, and we'll help you if you, if you get stuck. The cube root of 2 over the cube root of 7, and then, wait, times 7 and times 7. Oh, no, 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 I know. Not the cube root. Not the cube root. Not the cube root? So which one do you want? That one, that one. So the square root? Yeah. Okay. The square root of 14 down here, okay. And I'm confused. Yes. <laughs> Hunter, you want to help her out? Thank you. Square root of 7 on the top and square root of 7 on the bottom. Good. Excellent. Perfect. Excellent. 2 times the square root of 7 over 7. Guys, Hunter did an amazing job. Give it up for Hunter. Hey, I have a question for you now. If this two and this seven, do they have a common factor? No. If they did, what would we do? Simplify, okay? But only simplify with the numbers that are either both outside the radicals or both inside the radicals. Are we clear on that? Do not simplify this seven with this seven inside the radical. Do you guys see the difference? Because you don't simplify or multiply if numbers are inside versus outside the radicals. They either have to be both outside or both inside. Cool? Yeah. All right. The last thing that we're learning today, guys, is about and using them to also rationalize your denominator, okay? A conjugate just means you're changing the sign between two terms, okay? So we're going to do some examples. We're going to see some examples where we're going to have, like, an expression of three plus the square root of five, okay? The conjugate of this is just saying, okay, what operation is in between the three and the square root of five right now? Addition. What would be the opposite of addition? Subtraction. Subtraction. So this conjugate is just three and the square root of five with a minus sign between them, okay? You're only changing the sign in between the two terms, okay? That is it, okay? Let's try another one. Let's do four square root of two minus five square root of six, for example, right? What do you think the conjugate of this, of these two terms would be, Kaya? Four square root of two plus five square root of six. Very good. Okay, the conjugate would be 4 square root of 2 plus 5 times the square root of 6. Let me give you one more. I'm going to try to throw you off by this one. What if we had negative square root of 3 minus the square root of 7? Negative square root of 3 minus the square root of 7. What would be the conjugate here? Josh? Very good. Did Josh change the value of the first term? No. What did he only change? The middle symbol, okay? The symbol between the two terms, all right? Are there any questions on what a conjugate is? Isabella? Okay, hold it. All right. Conjugates. So why is the conjugate useful, okay? 
The conjugate helps us when we need to rationalize the denominator. So take a look at letter A. We have 7 over 2 minus the square root of 3. Guys, what's illegal about this, leaving this as my answer? We have a radical in the denominator. Highlight it, guys, okay? We have to somehow get that radical out of the denominator. Now, how is this problem different than the examples we did previously? There's two terms there. There's a 2 minus the square root of 3. This is where we have to use the conjugate. So instead of multiplying by just the square root of 3, we're going to multiply by the conjugate. What would be the conjugate of 2 minus the square root of 3? 2 plus the square root of 3. Okay, so we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by 2 plus the square root of 3. Now, let's write this out. It's going to be 2 minus the square root of 3 and 2 plus the square root of 3. What does this look like? Ah, something we should foil. Do you guys agree? All right, who can walk me through foiling this? Who's comfortable foiling? Gabby? Two times two. Excellent. Which is? Four. Mm-hmm. Um, negative, wait. Yeah, negative square root of three times square root of three. Good. Negative square root of 9. Very good. Um, negative square root of 3 times 2. Can we multiply those? No. So we're going to leave it negative 2 times the square root of 3. Okay. 2 times the square root of 3. Excellent. So positive 2 times the square root of 3. Got it? Very good. Nicely done. Okay. What do you notice about this once we foiled it? Hunter? You're so good. They sure do cancel. Because one's positive and one's negative, and they're the exact same term. What else do you notice? You know the square root of 9? What is it, Miguel? Excellent. So this is actually going to be 4 minus 3. What's 4 minus 3? 1. That's a very convenient denominator, is it not? So our denominator went from 2 minus the square root of 3. When we multiplied by the conjugate, what did it become? 1. Okay. You may think it's too much work. Good luck on your exam. Okay. What do I do in the numerator, though? What do I do in the numerator? Distribute the 7. So we do 7 times 2, which gives me? 14, and we do 7 times the square root of 3. Is that the square root of 21? No. No. Why not? One doesn't have a radical, and one does have a radical. So what is 7 times the square root of 3? It's 7 times the square root of 3. All right. This is our final answer. We're done, but we can make it look a little bit nicer. Well, how can I make this look a little bit nicer? Just 14 plus 7 times the square root of 3. Why? Because it's over 1. Yeah? What? Over 1? Yeah. But I would prefer if you did it. It looks nicer that way. Okay? Any questions? What questions do we have on the first example? Okay, let's see another one. Let's take a look at B. So we have 8 over 1 plus the square root of 3. What's wrong with leaving this as my answer? I still have a radical in the denominator. Very good. So in this case, though, we're not going to multiply by just the square root of 3. What am I going to multiply the denominator by? 1 minus the square root of 3. What do we call that? Conjugation. Very good. 1 minus the square root of 3. 
So let's go ahead and multiply both. 1 minus the square root of 3 to both sides. Someone different, can you help me foil this? The dom denominator. Someone new. Sancia, please. Not today? No, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Can you help me out? <laughs> Kyle? Foil. Go for it. Yep. Okay. One plus the square root of three times one minus the square root of three. What do I multiply first? One times one. One times one, what is that? One, okay. Then the square root of three times the square root of three. Mm -hmm. Is the square root of nine? Excellent. What sign is it though? Why is it negative? Because there's a negative 3 right there. Good. It was a positive square root of 3 times a negative square root of 3. Okay, keep going. And then uh, square root of 3 and times 1. Okay, what is that? Uh, 3? Nope. Square root of, wait, square root of 3. Square root of 3. Yeah. Because anything times 1 is just itself, correct? Yeah. And the last one? 1 is square root of 3. One times square root of three. Which is it? It's not the square root of three. It's negative square root oh, of three. My bad, my bad. So what is that going to give me? Negative square root of three. Negative square root of three. Guys, when you foil this, the conjugate is very helpful because something will always cancel. What's going to cancel here, guys? Those threes right there. The square root of threes. Do we know what the square root of nine is? Three. Yeah, so this is just one minus three, which is negative two. Which is negative two. Yeah. It's fine. You help for the first part. He help for the second part. Teamwork. Teamwork. All right. So our denominator is now negative two. What do I do with the numerator? You distribute it. What is it going to become when I distribute it? You multiply eight. Mm-hmm. Bless you. And then put 8, negative 8, square root of 3. Very good. This would give you almost all of the points on a quiz or a test. You can simplify this. How can I simplify this fraction? What are all of the terms divisible by? By 2. I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. This negative 2, you can distribute it to 8. What would 8 divided by negative 2 become? Negative 4. What would negative 8, square root 3, divided by negative 2 become? Positive 4, square root of 3. So my final answer is going to be negative 4 plus 4, square root 3. Hunter. It would be zero if it looked like this, Hunter. If it was negative four square root three plus four square root three. What is that first four missing for us to cancel them out? Can you say that one more time a little bit louder? Mm hmm. No, because remember, this, this is its own term, right? It's not negative 4 plus 4. It would have to be in parentheses, Hunter, like this, in order for us to add those negative 4s together. Okay? Good question. All right, guys. Um, this is where we're going to stop for today. Go ahead and turn in your notes to day two. So we treat like radicals just the same as like terms. So let's go ahead and do an example with radicals. If we have 7 times the square root of 3 plus 6 times the square root of 3, we treat the square root of 3 just like x, right? So we're not going to combine the square root of 3s. What are we going to combine here? The 7 and the 6. And what is 7 plus 6? 13. But what goes next to the 13? 
the square root of 3. Do not add these two square roots of 3 together and get the square root of 6. We don't do that. We, it just comes along for the ride, okay? Now, not only did they both have to have radicals, but the number underneath also had to match. What if we had 9 square root 3 minus 7 square root 2? Could we combine these? No. no. Okay, this is an example where we cannot combine these. Why not? They're not like radicals. Very good. So we're going to use the term like radicals now, right, to determine if they are the exact same radical and the exact same radicand, which is the number underneath the radical, okay? So these two we would not be able to combine. What questions do we have so far before we start the examples? Okay, let's do an example. Let's look at letter A. Does anyone think they know what two terms we would be able to combine? Natalie? Uh, 5 radical 7 and negative 8 radical 7. Excellent. Why are we able to combine those two? Because they have the same radical number. Excellent. So what is this going to be? Uh, negative 3 radical 7. Negative 3 square root of 7. This is part of the answer. Plus Sophia? Plus 11. Plus 11 like this? No, with the radical symbol. With the radical symbol. Is this the final answer? Very good. Always, guys, check before you finish the problem. Do we know the square root of 7? Can we reduce it so it's a perfect square? No, so we're stuck. What about the square root of 11? Do we know it? No. Can we reduce it to be a perfect square? No, so we're done. Okay? You want to get stuck, okay? You want to not be able to reduce anymore. Questions on letter A? What questions do we have? We're good? Okay, let's check out letter C. What changed in letter C? The index is different. Should we freak out? No, okay, it's just a different index. Do the bases match though? Do the radicands match? Yes, they do, they're both X. So what can I do here? What do you think? Add what? Specifically, we're going to add just the 6 and the 2. Do you agree? So what's my answer? 8, eight, eight index, three, index 3, and x on the bottom. That's it. Because we don't know the cube root of x. Do you guys agree? Hello? Okay, cool. Talk to me. What questions do we have on letter C? All right, let's go back up to B. Right off the bat, guys, do the radicals match? No. So right now I cannot add them together. Do you guys agree? Yeah. But look at your radicals separately. Can we sort of reduce the square root of 5? Can we simplify that? No, because no, it's not a perfect square, nor does it have a factor of a perfect square. What about 20? Yes. Yeah. yes. What can we break up 20 into that will help us? Addison? Square root of four and five. Very good. The square root of 4 and the square root of 5. Guys, do not touch the 10 radical 5 yet. So 10 radical 5 is going to stay the same. What was the purpose of Addison breaking this up? AJ? Oh, yeah. Which one is the perfect square? Very good. What's the square root of 4, guys? So it's 10 radical 5 plus 2 radical 5. What do you notice just happened that's super exciting for us? The radicals became the same. Yes, they did, McCarvin. Oh, yeah. And now once the radicals become the same, what can I do? Add 10 and 2. Add 10 and 2. That gives me? 12, 12 radical 5. 5. Am I done? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah buddy. Well, yeah, Caitlin. For C, if the index is different, don't add them together. Okay, did you guys hear Caitlin's question? Guys, if this index was a three, we're gonna stop. There's no way we can add these together. Your indexes have to match as well as the radicand underneath. Very good question. Cool beans? All right, let's take a look at letter D. What are we thinking in letter D? Gabe? Uh-huh. Yeah, buddy. Yes, minus the square root of 6. Before we call it a day and say that it's done, do we know the square root of 2? 
can we simplify it? No, so we're stuck. What about the square root of 6? We know the square root of 6? Can we simplify it to what? The square root of 2 and the square root of 3? That doesn't actually help us. Why doesn't that help us? It's not a perfect square for either one. So are we stuck with the square root of 6? We sure are. This is our answer. Do you guys see how that works? I am not denying that 2 and 3 are factors of 6. But what do our factors have to be for us to simplify it? Perfect squares. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Letter E. Letter E. Do we have matching radicals? No. We can simplify the 63 how? Excellent. The square root of 9 and the square root of 7. Why those two values? Because 9 times 7 gives me 63? No. Why did we pick those two values? 9 is a perfect square. You have to keep that in mind. So it's going to be 4 root 7. Don't touch that guy. Minus 6 times 9 times the square root of 7. This is 4 root 7 minus 6 times what? 3 and then times the square root of 7. What do I do now? Very good. Why can I multiply the 6 and the 3 now? They don't have radicals. Very good. Okay, what is 6 times 3? So 4 times the square root of 7 minus 18 times the square root of 7. What just happened that I'm very happy about? Why? They're now the same. Do you guys see that? Now I have two radical 7s, so I can combine them. What do I get when I combine them? Negative 14 radical 7. Boom, bada, bing. How are we feeling? Mia? How did I know when to multiply? So Mia, in these problems, everything is multiplication except for this minus sign, right? This is 4 times the square root of 7. This is 6 times the square root of 63, okay? What else? Talk to me. What? No. The only other thing is we're going to multiply these radicals. So we're going to distribute a little bit. It's not too bad. Are we good with this? All right. Can you guys try F on your own? It's way easier than it seems, guys. Okay, just try it. All right. Who thinks they have the right answer? Alec? Yep. Very good. That is the right answer. Give it up for Alec, guys. Okay. How are we feeling on this part? Can I move on? All right. Move on to the next part. Now, we are going to be multiplying radicals, okay? So, I told you guys, you can only multiply two radicals if they're both underneath what? The radical symbol. Can you multiply a number that doesn't have a radical with a number that does have a radical? No. no, you leave them separately. So am I able to multiply the 5 by the 3 here? Yes. What do I get? 15. The square root of 15. Very good. And what else do I do? 75 times 5. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do 75 times 5. This will give me what's 5 times 5? 25. Bring up the 2. 5 times 7? Plus 2? 37. So 375. So we have minus the square root of 375. Cool? No. Take it. Yeah, go ahead. Why didn't I? Because remember, in order for these to multiply, right? Do you remember how yesterday when we had like the square root of 15, we broke it down into the square root of 5 and the square root of 3, right? You, when you do the opposite, you keep the square root when you multiply them together, okay? Good question. All right, can we reduce the square root of 15? Why not? It's not divisible by 4, and it's not divisible by 9. Those are our perfect squares less than 15. So we're going to leave it the way that it is. What about the square root of 2, 375? It does have a perfect square factor. What is it? 
What do you think it is? It's 25. Let, but let's try it. 375 divided by 25. Guys, some of you are asking, how do you know? Sometimes you don't know, and you just have to try, okay? You could have tried 9. You could have tried 4. You could have tried 16. I'm going to try 25 because it ends in a 5, okay? Go ahead, McCarvin. How many times can 30, 25 go into 37? 1. What do I subtract? 25. What's my remainder? No. 12. And then I do what? Bring down the 5. How many times can 25 go into 125? 5 times. Does it go in evenly? Yeah, sure does. Okay. So my factors for 375 are going to be the square root of 25 and 15. Time out. Talk to me. Talk to me. What questions do we have so far? Addison? You sure? Okay. Why did we pick 25? It's a perfect square. What's the square root of 25? So we have the square root of 15 minus 5 times the square root of 15. Why am I like really, really happy right now? They do match. What can I do if they match? You can combine the like radicals. What is the coefficient of the first one though? It's 1. Very good. So what do I do? 1 minus 5? What's 1 minus 5? Negative 4. Is negative 4 my answer? No. no. What needs to go next to it? Radical 15. Awesome sauce. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Just one more step because we have to distribute. Talk to me. What questions do we have? Hey, now, one more example. Yes, I will be. Okay, last example, peeps, I promise. Let's do this one, letter B. What do I do in letter B? Distribute. Distribute. When I multiply the square root of 3 times 8 times the square root of 2, what two numbers, I don't multiply every number, what two numbers do I multiply? The 3 and the 2 because they both have radicals. So this is going to be 8 times the square root of 6. You're not? Here we go. Square root of 3 times 7 times the square root of 32. What two numbers do I multiply? 3 and 32. Let's do it over here on the right. 32 times 3. What does that give me? 96. So we have 7 times the square root of 96. Who have I lost? What questions do we have so far? Yay. We're good? Okay. You guys can ask me if you need me to stop. Can we reduce the square root of 6? No. That one's stuck. What about 96? Probably. 64, 64 times what? Nah, 64 won't work. 16, let's try to put 16 into 96. How many times do you think? Six. What's six times six? Bring up the three, what's six times one? Plus three? Whoa. Does it go in evenly? So my factors here are eight square root six, plus 7 times the square root of what? 16, 16 and the square root of? 6. six. Hey, do you, want me, do you want me to give you a hint? If 6 is over here, what do you think one of your factors should be of 96? 6, six right? Because you want those radicals to match. Just a, an observation, maybe. Okay. Um, what do I do from here? What is the square root of 16? Four. Very good. So we have 7 times 4 times the square root of 6 plus 8 times the square root of 6. Have we touched the left piece, the left term? No. Okay? It's going to stay that way the entire problem. We're just reducing the right-hand side. What's 7 times 4? 28. 28 times the square root of 6 plus 8 times the square root of 6. Why am I happy? They do match. So I can combine them. What's my final answer? 36 square root of 6. Hey now. Okay, guys, there is a third assignment that I've added to Canvas. You need to turn in your fully completed notes to that assignment. Do so now.